Immunopathogenesis of SARS-CoV-2 Infection We will discuss the viral replication cycle followed by dysregulated host response that occurs following the viral infection. The portal of entry of coronavirus is the respiratory tract. Coronavirus enters into the respiratory epithelial cells and starts multiplying and replicating. The spike protein of SARS-CoV-2 binds to the ACE receptors in the respiratory epithelial cells. This binding is facilitated by a transmembrane protein called TMPRSS2. This is followed by separation and release of viral genetic material into the host cell. Once released, the viral RNA uses the host ribosomes to form several polyproteins. The proteases that form cleaves these polyproteins into several important moieties, one being RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. This is a key enzyme that causes transcription of primary viral RNA into multiple subgenomic positive and negative sense mRNA strands. It also facilitates in formation of other structural proteins like spike, M, E and the nucleocapsid protein. In the stage of assembly, the mRNA and structural proteins are packed into small virions. Finally, these virions are released out either through exocytosis or due to cell lysis. The clinical features occur either due to acute viral infection or due to a dysregulated host response that occur following the viral infection. Once the virus enters into the body, the dendritic cells endocytose these viruses and present them to CD4 and CD8 cells. The CD4 cells cause CD8 cell priming and also B cell priming. This results in antibody secretion by activated B cells called plasma cells. The CD8 cells on the other hand are responsible for viral clearance either through perforin granzyme pathway or fast ligand pathway. They cause apoptosis of the infected cell and thereby mitigate viral infection. Both these pathways are important in SARS-CoV-2 viral clearance. SARS-CoV-2 is known to cause profound lymphopenia and relative neutrophilia. It is also associated with a host of inflammatory cytokine release. These cytokines, especially interleukin-1, interleukin-6, interleukin-17 and many others cause prolonged activation of several inflammatory pathways leading on to systemic inflammatory effects. These lead to severe organ dysfunctions leading on to death. Following a viral infection, an early type 1 interferon response is noted which results in rapid viral clearance and milder disease. Those who have delayed interferon response or interferon deficiency have been associated with severe outcomes. The role of interferon therapy in clearing the viral disease is being explored. Finally, antibody dependent enhancement is a unique mechanism that is noticed in certain infections like dengue where non-neutralizing antibodies or sub-neutralizing antibodies facilitate enhanced viral entry leading on to poor outcomes. Through all these mechanisms, SARS-CoV-2 infection predominantly affects the respiratory tract and cytokine storm that results in severe organ dysfunction. Essentially, no organ is spared from coronavirus disease. Children, due to strong innate immunity, lack of comorbidity, restricted outdoor activity and a variable expression of ACE2 receptors and regenerative capacity of alveolar epithelium tend to have milder course when compared to adults.
a very small proportion of children may develop severe multisystem inflammatory syndrome 4 to 6 weeks following the viral disease we will discuss in detail about missy in the later lectures the reason why few individuals develop a milder course and few develop severe course and few are predisposed to missy is unclear whether there is a genetic susceptibility remains unanswered with few preliminary studies showing monogenic variants leading on to increased predisposition to severe disease If you like these videos please subscribe us and follow us for new updates